I am a terrible host. <clears throat> we did a bunch of dirt work. I think I filmed, what, just a few minutes worth? Man, I was battling these trucks, fighting these trucks, so I've not been in any big tractors or been able to film any big tractors. So now we've got to wait a whole year. Uh, back to the disking, deep ripping, laser lamp playing. Yeah, sorry guys. I'm out here, we're irrigating a field for the first time, so we get to look at irrigation, talk about irrigation a little bit, which is always a topic everyone likes. This field's dark brown, you can see compared to the light brown spots, so it's already been irrigated once. First time through. All right, this field has some slope. Most of our stuff is very flat and it has a hard time pushing the water all the way through. This is a great time to show you a couple forms of irrigation that we're using in this field right now. One is a siphon tube, the other is a porthole. There's a siphon tube, it's just uh, gravity. You use your hand and you pump the water through the pipe and you throw the pipe over, and as long as that bottom of that pipe stays lower than this end of the water, then the water level, the water will flow through. This is a porthole. There is literally a hole in that cement ditch that that lid covers up. When they pull the port off, the lid off, the water goes right out. We've got those metal ditch tins there. This side's a little bit high. I can even see it. The dirt, they didn't cut real hard up here with the laser. And so they're forcing water that way so that it'll flow evenly across. This water is, uh, with the, with the, with the slope of this field, the water is going to move down this field, this uh, border fairly quickly compared to other fields. Now, common question, where's your water come from? Are you stealing it from the Colorado River, no, our water does not come from the Colorado River. It's a nice, pretty view, isn't it? Our water is pumped from right below us. The water below us is super salty. The cities, the town, doesn't even really want to use it. They would have to put in some desalinization. Oh, I hate gophers, oh man. See, now that he's irrigating, the gophers generally pop out because they get the water gets down in their home. Anyways, they would have to get desalinization plants to use the water that is below us. So we pump this water out of the ground. Now, I know what you're thinking. Awesome, you're pumping all the water out of the ground and using it all. Guess what? We've been used, this irrigation district has been here for 100 years. We haven't pumped it all and it's still here. We're under, we're regulated. They check how much our water use every year. Um, we have to report it. We're constantly measuring it and we have to pay for it. Now that brings up another topic. So I'm talking to you guys and watching for gophers. Oh, I wanna kill one. I don't have a shovel with me. So if I saw one, I'm not really sure what I would do with it. I wouldn't film it because that would be bad. Oh, there's a bird. Back to the uh, topic of water and all things. So with the price of natural gas going up, a lot of our electricity over here comes from uh, plants that burn or use natural gas. I don't know really how they do it to make electricity. Oh, bug just flew in my eye. Did you see that? Ah, anyways. So natural gas prices going up electricity prices going up. I just told you we pump all this water with large electric motors. Price of water is going up. So, price of hay is going up. We figure our break even is now, well, certain parts, we haven't figured ours yet. Ours isn't as bad because this district has been in this power district a long time. So we're our power, there's districts of power. The break even point's gonna go up anywhere from 10 to $20 a ton, depending what, what power district you're under. Now, so that's just the water. Twine just went up 
I think it went up by like three times. Uh, oh, I, I don't remember what it went up, but it used to cost like five grand to ship the uh, twine from across the ocean to here. That's how much it was the container. I think the last time we shipped it was 15 or 20 grand. So more than that, that so it's more than more than tripled. It's a quadrupled in price because that was just the freight tripled. So the price of the twine went up too. So freight's up and the uh, twine price is up because it is actually oil based. Oil's up. So twine's up. Cost of A goes up. Diesel's up. You guys just saw my videos of my sweet new diesel tank. Diesel's up. If you look, the water on that side of the border is over there. The water on this side is over there. That means this wasn't irrigated quite as flat as we would like it to be. That'll catch up. That's not, the fact that it is flowing is a good sign. It's not just coming this way. Um, that's why they put those tins up there that I pointed out earlier. So it'll all get covered. It just, you like these to be flowing a little more evenly, but it is what it is. But look how fast this water is flowing. Like it's moving. There are some fields that are so flat. It just like crawls along like the molasses practically. But this stuff is moving quite a bit. I want to get down to the where it is, where it's like where the water is at, so you can really see um, its speed. We're almost there. Okay, so water's up, twine's up, fuel is up, chemicals, fertilizer's up by like 50% or more. Bug spray, you gotta kill the bugs. Uh, pesticides, herbicides, gotta kill the weeds. People don't want weeds in their hay. They're super picky about it. All chemicals are up. So, the price of hay is up. Not to mention all the rain we talked about all summer long. You guys are tired of hearing about the rain. You're like, this dude lives in the desert. Why is he always talking about the rain? I estimate we lost about 4,000 tons of good hay. So not 4,000 tons of hay, of alfalfa. 4,000 tons of good, clean, number one alfalfa. I think we lost 2,000 tons of alfalfa in general from not being able to cut, maybe more. And then I would say there's another 2,000 tons that we made, we cut, we bailed it up, but it got rained on or it was overgrown and ugly. And that's, that's, so that's 4,000 tons of number one hay I would normally have in my barns. You would think I'm on the beach, right? Sir, what, what do you like to do? Like a dating game, you know? I like to walk along freshly irrigated fields in the breeze. It's beautiful out. That's what I like to do. And tell myself I'm at the ocean. Man, look at that sunset. Wow. Anyway, so it's gonna be a tough year on many fronts. We're already short on hay. I've got more phone calls, more emails than I've ever had in my life, people looking for hay. Two, the prices are up. People are already complaining. They're feeling the hurt. We are feeling the hurt. I bought because we're so low. I am out right now. Every like you've already, like we've already talked about the the other farm that I'm getting hay off of. 
So I'm all I'm out looking for hay right now. Here it is November. November 20th is the end of the year, and I'm still out looking for hay that we can still bale. We are paying out like so I had to pay so uh pay $250 a ton to get some hay from a guy that I didn't even bail myself. It was only two truckloads. It wasn't very, mu very much, but I just need the inventory. So then people get mad when they show up. So 250 at the field, had to haul it. $20 a ton. Got to pay for the semis, got to pay for the drivers, got to pay for the squeeze. $20 a ton. Then throw another 10 on for my office. $25 right away. 275. That is break even. So, got to sell it for 285. You got to have profit. I got to buy another squeeze one day. I got to buy more tr trucks. Got to fix the trucks when they break. Got to have profit. 285. And that's just average. Hey, so that's what I'm up against all the time and what stresses me out and what keeps me up at night is worrying about those things. So sorry for the long discussion rant. It's not a rant, it's just that's what's going on right now. That's the economy, that's the farming, that's the things that us farmers think about and have to think about. If you're not thinking about those things, you're gonna get in a you're gonna get in a in a pickle in a bind. Anyways, thanks for watching you guys. It's been look, so I've been it's I've been filming this stuff for like several weeks. Um, I get behind, I forget, I just get busy. So I don't even know what you're about to see, what you saw. And there's there's all sorts of stuff. The house, the house isn't even finished yet, so you guys will get to see this before the house goes up. I was hoping to get it done faster and it would be all in one video. That's not happening, which is okay. I'm not worried about it. But um yeah, thanks for watching. Tell your friends, tell your family about this crazy show. This guy says he's a farmer, but he never drives tractors. All he does is drive squeezes and semis now and then rants. <laughs> Sorry for the rant. Thanks guys. Oh, uh, I don't know if I told you, I got award from, uh, an award from Farm Bureau for my communications, basically social media stuff. So thank you for watching. They wouldn't have picked me if it wasn't for you guys watching these videos, the views, the subscribers, whether it's Instagram, YouTube, or TikTok. Thank you guys so much. I wouldn't have got that cool glass deal if it wasn't for you. And my wife, because she's the one that started editing. I don't know how to work a computer. You think being a millennial, I could, use a computer i cannot so yeah so thank you guys and thank you pumpkins um i love you anyways it's the holidays i love it oh there's my new truck new to me truck all right i'm sure that's gonna pop up oh you guys hay prices are so high because you wanted a new pickup yeah it's a 2018 three years old Came with 60,000 miles, but I still love it. It's a pretty truck. I feel spoiled rotten. See you guys. And does it get any better than this? Wow.